Before I introduce Kaka, I want to say I've been a client for, what is it, like six weeks now, yes. seven weeks? And um, they have a, a ratio that it, I didn't know about, which was um, cholesterol and HDL combination. And it's a scale of one to 10, and one to five is good, and five to 10 is bad. And I was 9.1. Yeah, so three weeks later after um, IV therapies and supplements and um, diet changes, it was 5.1, three weeks, yeah. And so coming to these on a monthly basis has been just really profound for, for not only me, but like Gisela who works here and Victoria and a number of people. And even my husband is participating on the fringe of it. So, <laughs> so anyways, Katka is not only a medical doctor, she is also a naturopath. She does IV therapies, chelation, um, ozone, all kinds of magical things, and it's very much catered to you. And one of the best things about these events is that she helps to make um, the complex very simple and understandable. So, Did with you I was uh, a few years ago, but it almost crippled me. So I decided I'd rather die of a heart attack than have the. The, 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 the sore knees, I couldn't walk and stuff like that. So uh, I stopped about five years ago and I've just been kind of going like this and praying and stuff, but this has really been good. So, so anyways, without further ado, Dr. Kaka. Hello everyone. Charles gave me these beautiful markers. Thank you so much for the introduction, Charles. Uh, I tested them. <laughs> Since I said I will try to make it fun tonight, even though we're talking about the colon, and <laughs> many times I'll mention the word bowel movement, as you'll know, and Mary, Mary Ann the other day was telling me, if you can say 10 times in one hour the word bowel movement, then you're good. <laughs> so we'll talk a lot about that. Uh, but before I start, what I would like to do today, who has been to uh, my other, my previous lectures? Okay, so quite a few actually were not. Okay, so um, the way I do things is a little bit different than just give you lots of information about the physical body and, and what to do. I definitely will include that as well. But what I like to do, and especially today, is kind of look at the overall picture, the, the energetics of health and, and the colon. So if you haven't here before, you're kind of going to get two different perspectives. One, the physical body and, and what to do for that, and one kind of connecting it to the emotional, mental, and the energetics because we cannot separate the two. Um, usually I do a meditation at the end. What I would like to do today, uh, and actually at a request, is just take a couple minutes and do a real quick one at the beginning as well. And you may keep your eyes open or you may close them, but what I, I would like you to do is just take a deep breath and just kind of feel your feet planted on the ground. And I'm really grateful that you have arrived today here physically. And see if you can arrive with all of your being as well. So kind of imagine there's like a point of light in the center of your head. And just put all of your attention to right here, right now, to the center of your head from yesterday, from tomorrow, from an hour ago, any expectations you have. And as you take the deep breath in and out, just feel yourself kind of present and grounded and dropping into your body as if that ball of light in your head is dropping down through your heart and into your belly. Almost feel your breath in your abdomen in and out. Just feel yourself really present in your body right now. This beautiful body, this beautiful gift we have been given. And just whatever information is, is going to land today, just open to that. And know that you are actually listening, not just with your mind, but you're listening with your whole being. So I'm going to have you take one more deep breath. And 
open your eyes when you're ready. Do you feel a little bit more present? It's quite amazing how the day goes and we run and Mike Lee was telling me the other day, it's like it took me half an hour to even like become present to start following you last time, so starting early today. The colon. The reason I am speaking about colon today is we, we talked about the liver, we talked about the pancreas, we talked about the heart, and today we're speaking about the colon. It kind of actually concludes the series of just the organs, and next month we're going to move to the system. So we're going to speak about the immune system, then the endocrine system, and the nervous system, which will conclude our ser series. But if you think about the colon, first of all, how many of you have a little bit of shyness, let's say, when it comes to speaking about, how was your bowel movement today? <laughs> yeah, yeah. You see, I have so many patients that come, and at the very beginning, you know, it's like eight years, I, I've been in eight years in practice in naturopathic medicine, where is I really learned how important it is to ask about elimination because we truly, we're only as healthy as our body's ability to eliminate toxins. Really, our gut is, is the key. Um, truly, Dr. Uh, Bernard Jensen, who's a really a famous uh, naturopathic doctor and chiropractor, he actually believes that 90% of chronic illness is due to some illness of the colon. And we'll definitely talk about that. But think about the colon, you know, um, in the center of the body. I'm actually going to speak a little bit more about the energetics first, and we'll kind of go back and forth between the physical and the energetics. But when I kind of look at the body, and if you have been to my previous lectures, you'll know a little bit how it's all connected. If not, please go to YouTube, um, Dr. Katka TV. Um, you can find all the previous lectures there. But if you think about the colon, it's kind of in the center of the body. And the liver is very much dependent on the colon to eliminate toxins properly, the liver, the gallbladder. The pancreas is very much dependent on the digestive tract to work properly. Same thing, same thing with you know, the whole body as far as the center in the colon. So I have been kind of thinking about the energetics and the, and the the movement of the of the flow of energy. If you think about, how many of you know about the chakras and heard about the chakras? Oh, okay, almost all of you then. Is there anybody who has not heard? Okay, so chakras are energetic centers in our body. We have actually eight of them, actually 12 of them, but in our bodies. C-H-A-K-R-A, did I get it right? And the first one is right at, at the base. And the second one is kind of like around the belly button. And the third one is in the solar plexus. Ooh, there you go. Can we turn the air down a little bit? Thanks. The third one is right in the solar plexus. Then the fourth one is your heart. The fifth one is your throat, speaking your truth. And then you have the third eye and then the top chakra. So the first three chakras are actually in the digestive tract area. And what has happened in our world, in, in our medicine, and the reason I want to speak about the energetics first is that we have truly disconnected from our body. You know, I have 10 years of medical school, uh, six years is traditional medicine, four years is naturopathic medicine. and going through the years of education and then the years of um, practice, I really see, and even speaking to so many doctors that I know, how even in naturopathic medicine, less so, but primarily in traditional medicine, we are taking the information we have, the thoughts, the knowledge about the chemicals and the, and the medication and the illnesses, and we're trying to transfer it onto our body from the level of the mind while being disconnected from our body. And the colon, in the, the general, the digestive tract, is really a big piece of this. And you're going to see that we have disconnected from these, 
these three base chakras, which the first one is really about the physical body. It's physicality. It's anything physical, what we feel is in the first chakra. The second is our feelings. Any kind of feelings, whether it's joy or sadness or anger or just feeling our body, period. And also our creativity and really kind of our purpose coming forward. And then the third one is our, our uniqueness in the world. You know, it's not just our self-confidence and our power. It's our uniqueness in the world and, and who we really are. And that we are unique. Our body, every single cell in, in my body is unique. Just like in yours. Just like in yours. There's no other person ever going to walk on this planet that's the same as Joy here. Right? So there is this treasure that we have right here. And the, the beautiful part is that actually our science knows about the gut brain. Have you heard about the gut brain? That we actually have a brain, another brain in our digestive tract. Um, there are some that believe we have three brains, so-called embraining, that we have the brain. Then we have the heart, which we talked last time about a lot, how the heart actually has its own brain in a way. And then there is this third brain in the gut. And the truth is, what's the definition of the brain? Like, how, how can it be a brain? Because it has neurons, and the neurons are connected, and they actually communicate with one another. That's a, that's a brain. So there are 100 billion neurons in the brain, in the nervous system. There are 100 million in the gut, which is still a lot. And the scientists were actually very surprised to find out that the main nerve that innervates the digestive tract is the vagus nerve, that most 90% of, of the nerve actually goes from the gut to the brain. It's not the other way around. It's from the gut to the brain, 90%. And every single neurotransmitter that the brain produces, the gut produces. The gut actually has its own brain, and it is very important to know that for two different reasons. One is that our emotions really do affect how we feel, who we are, our energy, what we think, very much so. Let's think serotonin. Serotonin, for example, as you know, is the number one um, neurotransmitter targeted by um, antidepressant medications, the SSRI, like the Paxil and the Zoloft and the Prozac and the Selexa, they target serotonin. Well, 95% of serotonin is produced in the gut. 95% of serotonin is produced in the gut. So not only these medications do disrupt the gut and create a lot of digestive problems, they actually disrupt the, the flow between the gut and the brain, which then disrupts many other things. Um, it produces GABA and glutamate and, and actually has a receptor for benzodiazepines, which are anti-anxiety you know, kind of medications. So it really, it, it, it's a whole different picture to look at the gut as there's more going on than just digestion and elimination. And it is important to know because not only is this connection important between the gut and the brain, and, and truly our, our thoughts can very much affect our gut and can affect our health and how we feel, but the, the actual disease or, or discomfort or inflammation, the gut can really affect who we are. So that's very important. And then the other piece with this is if there is a brain in the gut, and if I'm disconnected from my body, and if I'm disconnected from this powerful part of myself, that, and as you will see, the, the digestive tract, you know, when we talk about colon, we talk about the small intestine as well. But when we are disconnected here, how can we, and, and really 90% of most illnesses start here, how can I heal when I am not connected? when I'm just coming from the level of the mind. It's really a big picture that, that I'm hoping is going to, and it will, it will, you know, this metaphysics and, and, and quantum physics information is coming forward. It's just medicine is behind. But it's that connection to our body is where we actually get the power to heal. So um, there are many, many of my patients and a few people here that may share is, is we can heal pretty much from anything. That is my belief. And I want to 
transfer that onto you. And if you do not believe that, just know it is possible. And I have seen so much of that. And it really is not miracles. It is, it is, it is possibility. But it does not happen when we only come from the level of the mind. We have to connect to this powerful center here. And the reason for that is because not only um, does it center us in to who we are, but in this one, two, three chakra, especially in the third one, is where the action comes in, right? Is so when we're connected to our physicality, to our feelings, over here then in the third chakra is where the power to take action and take care of ourselves and to, to create for ourselves what we desire. So connecting to this beautiful part of ourselves is very important. And the reason I'm starting with the energetics is because truly what has happened in our medical world and specifically in traditional medical world, um, naturopathy is so much further ahead, is that we have kind of taken the bowel and the gut and sort of created, you know, gastroenterology, which is the, the gut doctors. And there are a few diagnoses that we have, such as you probably a lot of, you know, um, you know, Crohn's disease and ulcerative colitis and, and cancer and, and, colon, and colon cancer, and I'll come back to those. But we have diagnoses of the colon and treating specifically the colon and totally taking the colon outside of the whole. 